your business. Let us assist your plans today. When it's a matter of your health, Tulane On Call. When you have questions, Tulane On Call. With expert advice, Tulane On Call is on call for you now. More than a house call, it's Tulane On Call. Good evening, I'm Jerry Rummig, and it's my pleasure each Monday night here on Cox 4 to welcome you to yet another Tulane On Call, the medical information program that offers you, our viewers, the opportunity to call in and speak with an outstanding member of the Tulane Medical Faculty, to speak with them about health matters that concern you and your family. Tonight, we're delighted to welcome to Tulane On Call, Dr. John Carlson, who joins us for what will be a fascinating discussion of great interest to just about everyone in Greater New Orleans. That subject, cockroaches, and how these ugly and all too visible pests are able to seriously affect the health of our community, particularly our children who suffer from asthma. Dr. Carlson is director of a program known as the No Roach Project, the New Orleans Roach Elimination and Asthma in Children Study. Dr. Carlson is a 1998 graduate of the Tulane University School of Medicine. He came to New Orleans after completing his undergraduate studies at the University of Maryland, where he gained a degree in entomology. After completing his MD studies here at Tulane, he would remain for a PhD in parasitology. Tulane University has long enjoyed a national reputation for its School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. Tonight, it's our special pleasure to welcome Dr. Carlson as a special guest with a truly fascinating and a very localized subject. Dr. Carlson is at this time directing an asthma prevention project known as the New Orleans Roach Elimination and Asthma in Children Study, known very simply as the No Roach Project. That project is now underway, and it is a program that needs the support and direct assistance of parents in Greater New Orleans especially parents of children who suffer from asthma. Dr. Collins, welcome. Thank you very good, much for having good. me. Tell us how this study first came about. I was initially contacted by Felicia Rabito, an epidemiologist mm -hmm. who specializes in the exposures that children have in the home that affect their health. Mm -hmm. She was applying uh, for funding at that time to look into whether or not controlling cockroaches in the home environment could lead to improved asthma control in children. He felt that there was a co the connection was there. Yes. For, uh, Felicia Rubito, she had uh, previously conducted a study mm -hmm. that was sponsored by the Housing and Urban Development uh -huh. that identified the exposures that children had in their home environment mm -hmm. uh, to specifically to see which of those exposures would be tied to morbidity in asthma in children. And she found that when the children were exposed to cockroaches, they had an increased risk of being or having been admitted to the hospital for worsening of their asthma. Mm -hmm. Not just a trip to the emergency department, yeah. but actually admitted overnight at the least yeah to the hospital for their asthma. Because they couldn't breathe. They couldn't breathe. Yeah. This was asthma more than just a mild flare of asthma. Mm -hmm. So it was at that point that she decided she really wanted to move forward with this and see, could we put together an intervention that we could use in the New Orleans area mm -hmm. to help children who have asthma to breathe more easily and suffer for, with fewer of these hospitalizations for asthma. It's called the No Roach Project. I'm going to hold this up for just a second, uh, and I'll tell you about how you can get a copy of this very easily. But it's the No Roach Project, uh, and the participants are needed now, tomorrow, the next day, and the next month for an, for an asthma project conducted by the Tulane University, the No Roach Project at Tulane, headed up by Dr. Carlson and his colleagues. Fascinating story. And, of course, the roaches are so... I don't care where you live in New Orleans, if you're in, in, the, in, the, in the most luxurious of surroundings uh, or, or, the, or the most neglected areas of our city, roaches are there. 
We are blessed with both uh, an abundance of cockroaches generally, but also a wide variety of cockroach species. So it is an interesting place to conduct research mm -hmm. on cockroaches. Uh, it is an environment that has not been adequately studied. Mm -hmm. So in other cities around the country, the exposure to cockroaches as a driver for asthma mm -hmm. in urban city uh, environments, uh -huh. inner city environments, that's been seen in other studies. What hasn't been adequately investigated is whether or not control techniques that we would use mm -hmm. that, that have been used elsewhere, whether or not they're going to work in the unique environment that we have here in the Gulf South in New Orleans. Unique in what sense? It's very humid, which cockroaches love uh, warm, humid yeah, weather. Okay. And it is a semi-tropical environment. Mm -hmm. This is where the German cockroaches, which are typically seen in great abundance in cities up north, mm -hmm. we have plenty of those, mm -hmm. but we also have the cockroaches that are more tropical in nature, mm -hmm. the American cockroaches mm -hmm. and the smoky brown cockroaches particularly. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that, uh, as you mentioned, we'll find those in homes. Uh, no matter what your socioeconomic background is, the cockroaches will find a way in. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at uh, not just uh, one species of cockroach, but we're looking at how effective we can be at controlling cockroaches of multiple types. Uh, doctor, how serious to our children is asthma? Asthma in New Orleans? Well, unfortunately, asthma can be fatal, and we do see fatal mm. asthma in yeah. both kids and adults. We see that in the New Orleans area. Oh, at this point, we, we have treatments. There are medications available where no matter how bad your asthma is, mm -hmm. there are treatments where we can bring your asthma under control. Unfortunately, it often takes more than one medication, mm -hmm. uh, and it takes the use of controller medications. These are medications that have to be used every day, mm -hmm. whether or not you have symptoms of asthma or not. It's very difficult uh, to take medicines every day, yeah. uh, even for adults to take medicines every day. So you can imagine in the turmoil of uh, the process of raising children yeah. that you need to remember often two times a day to mm -hmm. administer these controller medications to have the, the maximal benefit. At what age do, does asthma begin to manifest itself in children? In New Orleans, we'll start seeing signs of asthma at age two is where we'll start making the diagnosis. If mm -hmm. you have frequent episodes of wheezing uh -huh. that fall into the, the patterns that we typically identify uh, with asthma. Mm -hmm. As you get older, it becomes more of a problem for some of those children, less of a problem for others. It's those that have acquired allergy to cockroaches and other um, other allergens that are in the environment, those are the asthmatics that seem to have much more of a problem controlling mm -hmm. their asthma than others that, that never develop the allergic sensitizations. Okay, the, the cockroach finds himself or herself into our homes, uh, and they, apparently in New Orleans they, they do it rather fre frequently. Uh, what happens? The child touches something that, that it touches the area where a cockroach has left his, his dropping, so to speak? It is the droppings. It, the, primarily it's the, the droppings of the adult female cockroaches uh, mm -hmm. as they go about their uh, business of, of eating and defecating in the environment. Yeah. And that's the major source of the proteins mm -hmm. that trigger allergic reactions. The fecal pellets and the fecal smears, mm -hmm. uh, they degrade over time and become part of the household dust. So this is the dust filled with those proteins that mm -hmm. get breathed into the, the nose the, and into the sinuses mm -hmm. and down into the lungs that trigger a lot of the more serious allergic reactions, those asthma exacerbations that prompt um, treatment with the, the steroids that you might have to take by mouth mm -hmm. or into the vein in order to control that degree of allergic inflammation in the lungs. From your studies, Doctor, does New Orleans have a have more than a share of asthmatic children? There are plenty of asthmatics in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not more asthmatics than elsewhere. It's the pattern 
of reactions mm -hmm. that's more concerning. Mm -hmm. It's that when you're allergic to cockroaches, mm -hmm. you have that exposure year round. You yeah. never get a break from it. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the asthma that you have in more rural environments mm -hmm. where it may be seasonal. If you are allergic to birch pollen, yeah. you're going to have your flare of asthma in the spring. Mm -hmm. Once the birch pollen is no longer in the air, your asthma is going to be much easier to control. In fact, you may not need medications the rest of the year mm -hmm. if you're only allergic to the birch pollen. When you're allergic to the cockroach feces, the exposure is year-round. You're constantly breathing in those proteins. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to control cockroaches. And so you could have a flare of your asthma any time of year. Dr. Carlson, our telephone lines are open to, for, to our viewers. If you'd like to call and ask Dr. Carlson about this problem, a very serious problem in our community, feel, please feel free to call us tonight. And we'll be right back with Dr. Carlson and an asthma and roaches. Tulane On Call is on call for you at 504-304-2225. The Tulane Cancer Center is a nationally recognized center and a leader in patient-focused, research-driven cancer care. Tulane Cancer Center utilizes the latest in cancer treatment and protocol to ensure that you and your family receive 21st century care in an environment of excellence. Tulane Cancer Center, the doctors you want. for fun or for home, Goes, no matter if you're jumping for joy or for the gold, whether you do it for him or for the win, we'll be there. Tulane Institute of Sports Medicine, for the athlete in all of us, call 1-877-SPORTY. With expert advice, Tulane On Call is on call for you now at 504-304-2225. Dr. Carlson, does New Orleans have more than its share of asthmatic children, say, in comparison to the cities, other cities our size? Compared to cities our size, I, I, again, I, I think that it's... Um, it's not so much that we have uh, more asthmatics mm -hmm. as other cities uh, or, or other locations. It's really the pattern and the difficulty of accessing quality uh, care mm -hmm. of an asthma specialist that can look at the, the whole picture of the child or the adult who's suffering from asthma uh, and finding ways of treating that individual to fully control their asthma. Mm -hmm. Right now, there are resources around the city uh, for accessing the specialists uh, in terms of how to, how to access care for asthma that's poorly controlled. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's hard for people to uh, identify exactly what those resources are. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of uh, people don't realize that allergists uh, are a specific type of physician that is mm -hmm. a specialist in treating the allergic reactions of the lungs that we know as asthma. Mm -hmm. And so they will look for, um, you know, physician to physician trying to identify somebody who can offer them ideas or, or uh, treatment plans that yeah. will control their asthmatic reactions. The, the thought that a roach can be one of the great problems, one of the great causes of serious, severe asthma uh, is... Uh, not just fascinating, but it's critical to know uh, because we have such, we have the, the proper climate f for, for asthma. We do. It's, it is a real problem for a lot of folks in the New Orleans area. And <clears throat> that is a great hope of ours is that the control method that we're going to be using in mm -hmm. this, uh, the no roach study, mm -hmm we're really hoping that it not only suppresses or, or drops the number of cockroaches that we see in the home, 
our goal is really to try to eradicate the cockroaches from the home. Yeah. It seems like a, a yeah. large goal, but there is a research team uh, in North Carolina that has identified uh, a method that seems to be very effective at either eradicating the cockroaches or, or at least coming pretty close to it. You will have people standing in line in New Orleans for, for the product. Is, is it a product? It is. It's an approach which includes some of the products. Uh -huh. and at this point, we're trying not to endorse these products uh -huh. or this approach for the treatment of asthma until we have the data to show that it really works. Uh -huh. That's one of the big risks that we have in the field of medicine is we identify something that looks very promising. Mm -hmm. And when we start to casually mention, it looks like this is a very promising way of, of helping your asthma by getting rid of the cockroaches. Yeah. Unfortunately, future research may identify that, in fact, we were unable to drop the exposure to cockroaches sufficiently to get below that threshold for reactivity. Mm -hmm. So although you have gotten rid of a lot of the cockroaches, you have enough that, so that you're still having your flares of asthma. So this study will hopefully identify, uh, really answer that question, are we able to drop the exposure to the cockroaches sufficiently to affect the outcome for asthmatic kids in New Orleans? But you know that cockroaches do produce a subject called allergens. They do, and these mm -hmm. are allergens that are specific to the cockroaches uh -huh. that, that make them. Um, and so some of the allergens are produced by uh, both German cockroaches and American cockroaches, yeah. of which we have in uh, a plenty supply More of them in I New share. Orleans. More than I uh, share, right. Some are specific just to the German cockroaches uh -huh. and some are specific just to the American cockroaches. Mm -hmm. So when I test people for cockroach allergy and I test them separately, German yeah. cockroach and American cockroach, mm. most people who are allergic to cockroaches are allergic to both types, but not everybody. Oh. Mm. And I think that that really helps to identify which of the approaches for controlling the cockroaches may be more likely to be successful in an individual. So if you're allergic to just German cockroaches, uh -huh. one approach might be better. If you're allergic to just American cockroaches, a separate uh, approach might be more successful for that patient. Doctor, we've got a call from Melinda and Kenner on line one. Melinda, your question. Uh, yes, doctor, I was wondering, can pest control products cause asthma attacks? The exposure to pesticides is a real concern in the field of medicine generally because asthmatics are more sensitive to the things in the environment uh, than your typical person who does not have asthma. Our goal for asthmatics, adults as well as children, is to lower the exposure to pesticides to the, the very minimal amounts required to achieve proper pest control. And there are cases where exposure to the airborne pesticides does seem to trigger uh, asthmatic reactions. Mm -hmm. Not that it necessarily caused the asthma, uh, but they have been tied to the exposure to these airborne pesticides. And so we try to reduce that exposure as much as possible. Mm -hmm. thank, Melinda, thank you for calling. Uh, doctor, what age uh, are you studying for this project? For this particular study, we're looking for children aged 5 to 14. Uh -huh. And we picked that age because these are the children that seem to be very vulnerable to asthma and the allergic reactions mm -hmm. to cockroaches. Uh, not that as you go into adulthood, you don't have problems mm -hmm. with the cockroaches, mm -hmm. but just that it, this is a group that we feel very comfortable we can adequately define and describe. And it will be a fair test of whether this particular approach to controlling cockroaches, whether or not it works. Uh -huh. Once we've answered that question, uh, if it does work, we will attempt to increasingly generalize the, the information and, and test it in additional groups of uh, individuals. Well, if it doesn't work, then we'll have to answer the question of why. Is it this difference between German cockroaches and American cockroaches? Mm -hmm. uh, does it work for some types of patients more than other types of patients? And we'll have to look more closely at that. The, the family doctor must have diagnosed the child as an asthmatic. That's correct. You have uh -huh. to have the diagnosis of asthma. Uh -huh. um, and we're really... Not just asthma, but moderate... 
to we severe. We want moderate to severe, yeah. the, the persistent asthmatic. So uh -huh. somebody who um, more than once in a year is having to take systemic steroids, whether it's okay. the little kids will take Oropred uh -huh. or a, a steroid by mouth. Uh -huh. um, older kids may take prednisone tablets by mouth or uh -huh. get an injection yeah. uh, of the steroids or get steroids by the vein if they're going to the emergency department. This is a marker of of kids that have asthma more than that minimal inconvenience yeah. of, of difficulty breathing that maybe happens uh, once a year. But the child who has asthma uh, suffers, and, it, and in the family, the, the parents suffer with that child who is breathing so difficultly. It, there's nothing harder than watching yeah. a child, your own child, yeah. suffer. And having gone through the, the training at Tulane uh, in, in pediatrics, mm -hmm. you get that exposure. And that's part of what really drew me into the area of doing asthma research, is seeing those children. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they're yeah. unable to breathe. And yeah. you watch them either in the intensive care unit yeah. or, or in the uh, Tulane hospital in the clinics. Yeah. Uh, wherever they are that they're unable to breathe, it's, mm. it's very difficult to stand there and watch. Yeah. And there are few things that you can do in the short term to ease that breathing for them. Yeah. And children that have difficult to control asthma, particularly if they're allergic to food or to venom that yeah. may have triggered their allergic reactions, yeah. that can really be much more immediately life-threatening and yeah. it becomes much more frightening to watch that unfold. Fascinating subject. And Doctor, I'm sure we're going to have more calls, but we'll be right back with those calls. And also, if we have time, we're going to talk about some other asthmatic-oriented problems. Uh, we'll be right back with Tulane and Owen Call. Tulane On Call is on call for you at 504-304-2225. Tulane Medical Center's cardiology department provides diagnosis and treatment for patients with a variety of cardiovascular diseases using a wide range of invasive and non-invasive diagnostic testing, surgery, and transplant procedures. Tulane Medical Center provides state-of-the-art diagnosis and comprehensive family-centered treatment. Unsurpassed excellence in patient care is our primary mission. Tulane Cardiology, the doctors you want. Imagine if you could build your business all over again. You'd have windows in every office, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and more space to manage it all. But first, your growing business would have the ideal communications. Business class voice, video, and internet, all from Cox Business. Because no matter what size your business or how big your dreams, Cox Business can help make them a reality. Whether you're running for fun or for home, no matter if you're jumping for joy or for the gold, whether you do it for him or for the win, we'll be there. Tulane Institute of Sports Medicine. For the athlete in all of us. Call 1-877-SPORTY. More than a house call, it's Tulane On Call at 504-304-2225. And we're back with Dr. Carlson, and we're talking about the No Roach Project here in New Orleans at Tulane. And if you're interested, here's an important phone number to call, 988-6266, 988-6266. You're going to get one of these very basic, very simple little pamphlets. Explains the program and how you can become a part of it. Your child can become a part of it. And we're going to take a call now from Marie in Lakeview. Marie, you're on. Hi, doctor. My son had an allergy test a couple years ago. It was a standard uh, skin prick test. Um, and he actually tested positive for dust mites. And I was wondering, does this allergy test uh, include a sense of, uh, uh, if it, does it work for for detecting a cockroach um, allergy? The skin testing is the preferred way of testing for uh, different types of allergies that you may have, which includes the house dust mites that are almost ubiquitous in the New Orleans area. They're another 
a uh, very small uh, species that thrives in the warm, humid environment uh, of New mm -hmm. Orleans. Yeah. And there are multiple species of the house dust mites as well. They can be a real issue for those that are allergic to them. However, in our studies that we've uh, studied that we published earlier this year, we really identified cockroach as the single exposure that drove admissions into the hospital. In looking at how to implement uh, a, a control, uh, an environmental control program mm -hmm. that would be helpful to the children in the New Orleans area, we wanted to pick something that was relatively inexpensive, uh, relatively easy to apply, um, that was really sustainable in this environment that, that we practice our, our medicine in and, and that the children that we treat, uh, that they live in. So for this particular intervention, we are only targeting the cockroaches. Prior studies have looked at multi-interventional trials, which included the interventions for the house dust mites and the cockroaches, rodents, uh, mold, a variety of different exposures that can trigger allergic reactions. And they found that you could improve asthma outcomes when you use that multifaceted approach. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that approach is very expensive. And in the New Orleans area, it's hard to recommend something that had modest benefit and is so expensive. It's just not sustainable for most of the kids that we see. Mm -hmm. Therefore, for this study, we are really looking at this one simple, cheap approach to controlling asthma through cockroach control. That intervention would not be expected to be beneficial at controlling the house dust mites because they feed in a very different way than, uh, than the cockroaches feed. Doctor, let's tell our audience what the project requirements are. The child must be between the ages of 5 and 14. The, their family doctor or their specialist must have diagnosed the child as asthmatic, have moderate to severe asthma, live in the New Orleans area, with no plans to move in the next 12 months. That gives you the time to study the child and how the program is working, right? Absolutely. We don't anticipate that killing off all the cockroaches in a home will be easy. Yeah. Uh, we expect that it will take a, a try or two, mm -hmm. um, assuming that our intervention is successful that was developed in North Carolina. We want to give it uh, a fair test, yeah. and so we will do the intervention uh, in the homes and then monitor those homes over time mm -hmm. to see how effective we've been at eradicating the cockroaches, but perhaps more importantly, to watch how the child's asthma uh -huh. becomes. Is that asthma now more easily controlled? Are they having to go to the emergency department? Are they having to get admitted to the hospital? Mm -hmm. That's really, ultimately, what we want to know for this study. It's compensation. And there is compensation. Uh, it's, it's modest compensation yeah. for the, the participant's time. Um, and in addition, of course, there is the, uh, the treatment. All homes that are enrolled, uh, if you meet the eligibility criteria. An extermination. We'll get extermination. Uh, hey, that's, that's the best news yet. Yeah, we have yet to, to determine whether or not that will improve asthma control. But at the very least, nobody likes cockroaches, and we can help drive down the numbers. Let me give you this phone number once again, 988-6266, 988-6266. Dr. Carlson and his team will send you a copy of this very, again, very basic, very simple uh, pamphlet called The No Roach Project. And um, I think you're going to, if you've got a roach problem, uh, you, you might want to get one of these real quickly. We've, have we got time for, yeah, we've got a time. Mike, a quick question. I'm just tell them the basics. Sir? Excuse me? Hello? Yeah. What am, I on, am I on? Yes. Oh, okay. Quickly. Uh, okay, doctor, uh, I was uh, curious as to whether Tulane has checked into a very non-toxic recipe that I've used for 20, 25 years in my restaurant business and also home, oh, consists of um, some flour, some chopped onions, boric acid, a little sugar, and uh, you put them out, you know, like little mm -hmm. balls, and uh, it works fantastically. Great to hear. It sounds like an interesting approach. No, we have not uh, tested that. 
we are adapting a protocol that was put together in North Carolina mm -hmm. uh, that used different active ingredients other than the boric acid and different baits other than the onions and flour. And thank you for giving us a call. It sounds fascinating. Uh, and I wish we could spend some more time with you, but we just about run out of that. Dr. Carlson, thank you for being with us. The No Roach Project, call us at that number if you'd like a copy of this. It can be of great help to you and to your family. Thank you again. Thank you. And uh, we thank you for being with us this evening and for your calls. Dr. Carlson and his team members of the No Roach Project look forward to hearing from you. The number to call, 988-6266. And join us next Monday night when Dr. Patrice Delafontaine joins us for a discussion on heart conditions affecting women. For the family of Tulane Physicians, I'm Jerry Rame. Good night and good health. <laughs>